Jiminy Christmas. Hi. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so, uh, you guys like all iOS programmers? Is that what? I'm, I'm not seeing like, uh, you know, like, like there's one guy who's saying, you know. So, or, or do you like program an Objective C? Who, who, who's an Objective C programmer? Oh, look at that. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Who's ever programmed an Objective C? Oh, okay. All right. How old is this language? It was invented in 1980. Uh, so that would make it 36 years old. Who invented it? Brad Cox. Why? He wanted a better C, as did Jarnus Trustrup, who invented C++ in what year? Same year, 1980. Um, Brad Cox was a small talk programmer, and he was forced to program in C, and he didn't like C, so he wrote a little preprocessor in front of C, which made it look like small talk, and he called it Objective C. Jarnus Trustrup was a Simula programmer. And he was forced to program in C, and he didn't like programming in C, so he little, wrote a little preprocessor in front of C, made, and he called it C with classes. And then uh, about three years later, a buddy of his came to him and said, uh, you should rename this because that's a bad name. And, and they named it C++, which seemed better. Notice the parallel development here. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Objective-C kind of became known before C++. So in the early 80s when I was out, you know, a young programmer, uh, actually I was kind of old back then too, but <laughs> as a programmer of a certain maturity, I was you know, scouting around looking for interesting options because I'd been a C programmer for a while, and, and uh, there's this object stuff that people were talking about, and Objective-C was all the rage. Everybody was talking about Stepstone, the company Stepstone, and the IC packs they were selling. And I actually took a, a trip out to visit a company that was doing Objective-C back in 1980, some number, I can't remember what number it was, and, and it was very exciting. And then something bizarre happened. Jarnus Trustrup wrote a book. How many of you are C programmers? All right, now, you wait, if you're an Objective-C programmer, you're a C programmer. Right? Okay, so, uh, and how many of you have read Kernahan and Ritchie? See there? Right? Okay, so, uh, if you are a C programmer, you must have a copy of Kernahan and Ritchie. A K and R. You've got to have your K and R, and you have to know where it is. It has to be within 50 meters of you at all times. <laughs> and you know that the table of operator precedence is on page 49, right? You just know these things. Uh, Kernahan and Ritchie's lovely book, it's a big, nice white book, uh, paperback, it's got a big blue C on the front. It does not have the words don't panic on the front, but it might as well. It's about 150 pages long. As you open it up, you find a very pleasant font, a nice format, um, and this was the real selling thing. It has a chapter zero. <laughs> All the geeks know, oh, yeah. 1986, Jarnus Trustrup publishes a book, the C++ programming language. Now, it's not white. It's kind of a, a maroon color. And it's got, instead of a blue C on the front, it's got a big gold C on the front with two pluses. But it's still a paperback, still the same form factor. And when you open it up, it has the same font and the same layout and the same nice, nice readable language, and it's got a chapter zero. And all the C programmers go, oh, this is the next C. And they all abandon Objective-C, and they all go to C++, and Stepstone, the company that was trying to sell, sell Objective-C, Brad Cox's company, goes right down the tubes, and that should have been the end of it. Objective-C should have died at that moment and been left in the trash. <laughs> Except for an accident of history, which was that Apple had become relatively successful by then. 
They'd sold the Macintosh by 1983, and you know, the Apple II before that, and they had billions of dollars. And Steve Jobs, a young man at the time, says to himself, you know, this company needs a real businessman to run this place. So he scouts out around, and he, he hires possibly the most unlikely candidate he could think of, uh, a man named John Scully, who was the COO of Pepsi-Cola. Now, you might wonder why they would want to have the operations officer of a soft drink company running a high-tech computer company, but that didn't seem to occur to them at the time. Turns out that John Scully was not a particularly good CEO of Apple. He actually kind of drove it into the ground for a while. But he was politically astute enough to get Steve Jobs fired. And Steve Jobs, with several billion dollars in his pocket, says, well, I'll show those guys. So he founds a new company, which was called Next. And uh, he's going to make hardware. He's going to compete with Apple. He's going to bury those Apple bastards. And uh, he builds this hardware, and, he, and, and there's a bunch of guys out on the street, you know, holding up signs. We will code Objective C for food. So he hires them, <laughs> and they produce the Next Step operating system. Now, the whole enterprise is a dismal failure. Nobody buys the next machine. Nobody cares. You know, I knew of one company that bought one, and I own it now, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. But it didn't matter to Steve anyway, because uh, within a few years, Apple got rid of John Scully, and they went back to Steve and said, would you please come back, because we need some kind of creative influence here. And he said, I'm fine to come back, but I'm going to bring my whole team with me. And he brought all those old Objective-C programmers with him, and they brought the Next Step operating system with them, and they started working on iPads, iPods. <laughs> and so the whole language got resurrected, unfortunately. But there you go, that's the history. Why is it that we programmers are never happy with our language? Never. How many languages are there? Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and tomorrow there will be hundreds more. Right? How many languages have been invented in the last five years? In the last five years, how many languages have come out? It's Swift and Go and Dart, and, and how many more? And how many more do we need? What is wrong with us? <laughs> We're always looking for the better language. And you know, what, what have we learned with these new languages? I mean, this new language comes out, and is it better somehow? Well, it's got features of this language, it's got features of that language, it's a little more type safe or a little less type safe, it's got more dynamic typing, it's got less dynamic typing. Bah! Don't we, as a an industry need to stop this scatterbrain search for the golden fleece? Don't we need to at some point become adults and say, huh, you know, it'd be great if we could all speak the same language for the next 20 years without constantly having to rip everything up and throw everything away and tell our bosses, oh, you know, we've got to get the new language. Why? Because it's new. Well, I know, but is it going to buy us anything? Oh, yes, I'll be able to code much faster in the new language. Just watch. <laughs> oh, well, I'm ranting. 